Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video we're going to take a look at every major software architecture pattern that you should be aware of in software engineering. Now, this isn't just clean architecture like vertical slices, modular monoliths, we will cover those as well. However, this will also give you an overview of other things which effectively led into these architectures. So without any further ado, my good friend Steve Smith or our Dallas will take over this video and explain all of those, not only because he has one of the most popular clean architecture templates and he's one of the biggest advocates out there, but also because he has so much experience that he has seen all of the oldest ones as well in practice and will give you all that insight. So Steve, take it away. Hello, everybody. It's me, Ardalis from Nimble Pros, and I'm taking over Nick's channel for today. I just want to share a quick overview of some popular architectures that I think you may find helpful. Now, I could spend a long time on this topic, but I'm going to try and keep it brief. There are some common misconceptions about what software architecture actually is. Is it how the parts of a distributed system are deployed? Is it where code files live in your source repo? Maybe it's a bit of both. The term is often somewhat fuzzy and can mean different things in different contexts, as we'll see in a moment. But I'm hoping that this overview will help you identify different architectures and perhaps choose the right one for your application's needs. Now, to get a short list of existing architectures, I'm gonna be referencing Mark Richards and Neil Ford's excellent book, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, which I have right here. In it, they describe about a dozen different characteristics of software architecture, and then go on to describe eight different specific architectures, rating each one using these characteristics. Now, you may hear me refer to it as FOSA for short, because it's a bit of a mouthful. The first style covered is the layered architecture. Many of you are familiar with this one, also commonly referred to as N-tier or N-layer. It separates logic in the app based on technical concern, typically UI or presentation layer, business logic, and persistence. It remains incredibly common for business applications, but is frequently a source of problems due to tight coupling between layers and with infrastructure concerns, especially the database. Next is something they call pipeline architecture. This is how a lot of programming is done in operating systems like Linux, with small utilities that are able to pipe data one to the next. It's extremely useful for these types of small utility tasks. Then there's the microkernel or plugin architecture. The microkernel architecture has a relatively simple core system and it allows for extension via plugin components. Frequently, these components consist of both vendor supplied components and community supported ones. It's often a good choice for commercial products. Now there's a whole chapter on the service-based architecture in the book and it has many different variations. At a minimum, there are a number of different services within the app, each with clearly defined responsibilities. They typically will share the UI and data, but these could be split up as well. So you might have something where it looks more like this, where you have separate UI for each service and even possibly separate databases for each service. We'll talk more about this soon. Next, we have event-driven architectures. Now, in this case, there may be an orchestrator responsible for managing the steps involved in the workflow of a given request. This is frequently referred to as the orchestration model. The benefit of the orchestration model is that you have a single place in your code for any given workflow that you can look at and see how that workflow is defined. It's what manages or orchestrates that particular set of events or processes that have to take place. An alternative approach, referred to as choreography, has a number of defined events and processors or handlers. And the workflow is just a result of the existence of these events and their various handlers. There is no single process that you can go and look at to see what is the flow of a given process or workflow in your system. Instead, it's just something that emerges based on the state of the system. So choreography can be much more powerful because it's very flexible, but treating or diagnosing problems with this architecture can be more difficult because you can't just go and step through a single method and see what's supposed to be happening. The FOSA book also describes an orchestration-driven service-oriented architecture as well as the space-based architecture, but I'll let you read about those yourself if you're interested. The last architecture covered by the book is, of course, microservices. The key feature of microservices being the independence of services from one another. Assuming you design them properly and don't do something like this example on the right, where every microservice is tightly coupled one to the next, 
with synchronous HTTP calls. This is a good way to create a distributed ball of mud application. All right, so that is all of the architectures covered in the FOSA book. But wait, that can't be the whole list because what about the most common .NET architectures that we hear about every day? I keep seeing videos in my feed about clean architecture and vertical slice architecture and even modular monoliths. Where do those fit in? All right, well, let's talk about those. We can think of each of these types of architectures as just variants of the architecture types described in FOSA. Domain-centric architectures like clean, onion, hexagonal, or ports and adapters are variants of the layered architecture style, but they organize the layers such that dependencies flow toward a domain layer, not infrastructure concerns like persistence in your database. There are small variations between these styles, but their unifying feature is that they have a focus on the domain and an emphasis on loose coupling to dependencies. Then there's vertical slice architecture, which is essentially an evolution of feature folders. It's like layered architecture with minimal layers. The idea with vertical slices is to avoid having separate folders or projects for all the things that you might need to make a given feature. And instead, put as much of those different classes into the same place, ideally in the same folder. So if you have a given use case or feature and it needs an endpoint, maybe there's a validation class, a couple of DTOs, perhaps a handler, you should put them all in one folder if you can. Now, some things might be shared, like ORM types, like a DB context, or shared libraries for doing messaging, but anything specific to a given feature should be co-located together, if at all possible. Then we have the modular monolith, which is a variant of the service-based architecture described in FOSA. I told you we'd be getting back to that one. Now, in a modular monolith, there's a very thin app host project that loads the application and its modules. And then separate features are broken up into distinct and independent modules. Notice that each of these modules can be organized internally, however you see fit. If you want more organizational layers and maybe a clean architecture style in one module, that's fine. And if you wanna organize by vertical slice in another module, that works too. The point is that this architecture, when implemented correctly, grants many of the advantages of microservices, such as independence of these modules, as well as allowing you to pick the ideal choice of single module architecture. It's what I call the Goldilocks architecture because it gives you the best of many options. Now, where can you go to learn more about these architectures? Fortunately, Dome Train has you covered. We have two courses on clean architecture in .NET, and you can also check out my free solution template available on GitHub, which currently has over 17,000 stars feel free to give it another one. Don't forget that right now you can still save 30% off any purchase on Dome Train with the Summer 30 discount code. To learn more about vertical slices, check out Kevin DocX's Zero to Hero course on this topic. And finally, to learn more about modular monoliths, check out my Getting Started and Deep Dive courses. And if you're already suffering from microservice regret, check out my Zero to Hero course on moving from microservices to a modular monolith approach. That's it from me for this week. Thanks to Nick for hosting me, and I look forward to hearing from the rest of you in the comments. For more from me, please follow me on YouTube as slash Ardalis or on ardalis.com. With that, I'm out. Keep improving.